Hi, everybody. I'm Bort Stearns of the Pulse Network. And I'm Scott Lewer of Digital Clarity Group. And welcome to the latest edition of CMS Connected. This is the web content management industry's only news commentary show. And we bring it to you live, monthly, and then it's on demand at Falcon Software and you could at CMS Connected where you can watch the show. So on today's show, we're going to discuss predictions, trends, and hot topics for the upcoming year. We're already a month into 2014, and that's what we're gonna talk about. And Scott, uh, we're also gonna have Tom Wentworth from Acquia, who's gonna Skype in on today's show. You didn't bring your turban and your crystal ball, but I do wanna thank you for dressing the part as the soothsayer and predictor for 2014. Growing a beard, that's got right. your all black on. That's Is this right. doom and gloom? You know, for, it's, for WCM and, it, for the, and for the web con the content You know, listen, industry? it is the year of rebirth. And for me, I'm not saying I'm sticking with this, but, you know, we're in Boston. When in Boston, hey, Red Sox Nation, right? Let me, let me pull it out. But, no, I do think, though, this is a wake-up call year. It's a new year. It's a new year for web content management and how people understand it, how they use it. And basically, we'll talk about this, but, you know, if you're not in line as a vendor with the way that this trend is going, and if you're not in line as a customer in terms of how you're using these tools, then you're going to be left behind. So that's why, to in your opinion, and again, we'll get into it, 2014 yeah. is a wake-up call Absolutely. in the content management industry. That's right. Bring okay. your beard out. That's it. I want to right. see your beard, by the way. I shaved my beard. I know. I, I see it around. All right. First of all, before we start the show, uh, I'd like to acknowledge our CMS lead sponsors who make CMS Connected possible. Falcon Software, basic delivery service is not enough to differentiate any web development firm in today's competitive marketplace. Falcon Software's detailed project process was created to ensure CMS projects are completed on time and on budget, propelling Falcon Software beyond customer satisfaction to loyalty that has driven their growth since 1993. And by Digital Clarity Group. Digital Clarity Group is a research advisory firm focused on the content, technologies, and practices that drive world-class customer experience management. Global organizations depend on DCG's insight, their reports, and consulting services to help them turn di digital disruption into digital advantage. It's time for some clarity. So again, our thanks to Falcon Software and Digital Clarity Group. All right, time to kick things off with our news items. You ready? Yeah, I am. All right, let's start with news item number one. Oracle, uh, and this is an article that comes from Business Tech, uh, but Oracle, uh, uh, for 1.5 billion, yeah. buys responses. Yeah. Um, the world's number two business software maker, Oracle, said it would buy cloud-based marketing software maker responses in a deal valued at 1.5 billion. Responses makes cloud-based software that businesses use to manage their marketing campaigns across email, mobile, and the internet. Oracle, led by Larry Ellison, of yep. course, uh, is boosting its cloud software business to fend off competition from nimbler rivals such as Salesforce.com, who offer internet-based software products, prices that often undercut Oracle. What's the key points about this? Yeah, I think there's two key points to discuss. Number one, um, by the way, Larry's got a beard. Uh, no, no, that's this not gonna number go one. On also. <laughs> I'm going to stop. I promise I'm going to stop. Um, I think number one is, listen, this is not news in terms of shifting to the cloud. If you as a vendor are not shifting to the cloud, the cloud is here to stay. And I'm here to say right now that let's, let's just stop the discussion about whether or not products should be delivered in the cloud or not. I realize there are business laggards or b folks who still need to kind of hear and understand this a little bit better, uh, but the cloud is here to stay. And if the news would be if they were not buying cloud-ready products, right? So that's number one. The second thing is, let's talk, we'll get into the discussion about responses and their orientation towards the CMO suite, right? Okay, so we've reached the point where, uh, it, it, you, you were talking about the show before me, and you was, you, I think you made a very interesting point yep. that on one end, there's nothing newsworthy about this. What would be more newsworthy is if it didn't happen. That's right. Right? Right, right. So amplify that a little yeah, bit more. Yeah, and it, you know, it being, if it didn't happen, meaning if they were not buying... Uh, the baggage that Oracle carries is their non-cloud ready products, right? I mean, it is the fact that they are such a big, large implementation that they are this big, huge behemoth that they've got this, you know, years or decades old software, right? And so... Um, if they were not buying cloud-ready software, if they're not orienting themselves toward the cloud, that would be, in my mind, the news. So I think um, journalists and all that, we need to stop talking about, oh, cloud, 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 from that standpoint. I think it's here to stay. It's the new paradigm, and the, the news, as I said, would be So let's talk about what this means for Oracle. Yeah. Um, yeah. With Oracle buying a cloud-based software that's geared towards 
marketing campaigns. Yeah. This is all part of trying to appeal more to the CMO, right? That's right. I think that's a, that, that to me is the more newsworthy thing is that Oracle continues to, to try to court the CMO, right, in this. So um, they've bought Eloqua recently, and before that they had Fatwire, and they've made a number of acquisitions in the marketing automation space, in the email marketing space, in the content space, all things that are all technologies that are kind of the suite of the marketer, so to speak. And so this is, you know, you can say that it's him trying to combat against Salesforce. You can say whatever you want, but the point is that Oracle is clearly orienting themselves to, in terms of courting the CMO. I think um, they're going to struggle with that. I think they'll continue to. But this is a shot at Adobe. It's trying to be basically be relevant in that market where they're playing. So, final question about this story again: Oracle yeah. buying responses for 1.5 billion. Yeah, um, which is about a 40 percent premium, I think, on what uh, on the stock of the really? responses before. Yeah, 38 percent something like that. So. Um, Oracle in the CRM space has always had their long story battle with SAP. Yeah, uh, that's yeah. their main competitor. But when yeah. it comes to the content management side of it, it, it Salesforce.com is their main competition, correct? Yeah. And if so, what yeah. does this acquisition do? Is it strengthening their battle? In terms of it? Oracle's traditional, you know, um, traditional enemies there, you know, the IBMs and the whatever, the big behemoths. I mean, this is just a matter of who can still, who can remain relevant in the non-database space, right? In the non-CRM space. Um, and so, yes, yeah, so right now they're pitting themselves against Adobe, they're pitting themselves against Salesforce, they're pitting themselves against those companies who are kind of more modern and, oh, by the way, are cloud ready and all those sorts of things. So, yeah, I think that's, that's what they're doing. That's obvious. All right, this is uh, CMS Connected, our number two story in our 2014 prediction show uh, is Upland Software acquiring clickability from Limelight. Reading from a press release that Upland put out, they're one of the world's largest cloud providers of enterprise work management software. They announced recently they've acquired Clickability, a leading cloud-based platform for web content management. Upland purchased the business from Limelight Networks, which acquired Clickability in 2011 and changed its name to Orchestrate TM Content Management. Upland will be reinstating the Clickability brand name. Yeah. So let me start there. That's not yeah. the most important point. Why, why, what do you think about the, what's the value in reinstating the Clickability brand name? So first of all, I like this. And as I told them, I spoke with both the Upland guys and with the, with the Clickability guys. Uh, sorry, I spoke with the uh, former Clickability folks, the Limelight folks, and I spoke with the Upland and Clickability folks of this past week. And as I told them, I'm actually happy to see the Clickability brand back. I think it got really lost. You know, Limelight was a CDN in the CDN business. They were about how, how fast they can put, push bits through pipes. It wasn't a supernatural fit for me before. Um, so I like bringing back the Clickability brand. It has a little you know, emotional connotation for me. They were one of the first ones in this whole SaaS play. Um, that said, I'm not sure this is the, the best fit for them, but I guess we could talk about that next. But I do like bringing back the Clickability brand. Why isn't this a good fit for Upland? I think this is going to be, a, you know, as we talked about, a little bit of a theme of the show here today where we need to get out of the old mindset. It's no longer your mother's CMS, right, anymore. Like, you know, you're, it's no more your, mo your mama's WCM. <laughs> I don't, my mama never knew about WCM. But but point is, it's like, you know, web content management, even its name, Ron Miller wrote an article about this on Fierce recently. Uh, Robert Rose wrote about kind of where have all the cowboys gone on, about web content management. There's been this discussion about, like, is the name even worthy anymore of kind of what it does? It has significantly morphed and changed over time. Well, there's, As, new, there's new terms, experience management. That's right. Customer experience management, yeah. right? All those and terms. all of those, regardless of what one wants to call them, what acronyms we give them, all of those are orienting towards being business relevant and being relevant to the audience, right? And be catering to the audience and helping a brand cater to the audience, where web content management was, more, was much more internally focused. How can we manage web content. It was an efficiency play. It was about how can we publish um, more effectively in this new, at the time, channel called the web. Um, and so, you know, I think the challenge here is that Upland and Upland Software is all about, if you look at the other, you know, products in their suite, and I don't claim to have followed them for a long period of time, but when I look at their products, I mean, I'll just list some of them. It's, you know, project management collaboration software, program portfolio management, professional services automation, time, time and expense. These are all like efficiency plays within an organization, how to make employees more effective at whatever it is that they're doing, right? And so they feel like WCM fits right into that. And again, I worry 
that this is back to kind of the WCM of old. It's about helping you know, employees more efficiently publish web content. And they're going to categorize it under the ECM label again. I mean, I, I, I worry about that. Well, you've made this point several times already in the show. Yeah. I think I know what some of your predictions and trends are going to be <laughs> for 014, but let's yeah. hammer it. Yeah. Um, if you still think of WCM as an efficiency play, you're a dying breed. I think is so, your yeah. point, right? Yeah. So I think you made another key point, too, about this story in particular. Whatever you want to call it, whatever the term is, experience management, whatever, yep. it's the intelligence behind it. That's what you need to be thinking about that drives this. That's right? right. The whole notion of right place, right time, right content, right person, right device, all of that sort of stuff. You know, the key, the publishing part of it is getting it to the device, getting it to the person, all of those things. The intelligence part of it is the notion of the word right. As I had a conversation with Tim Walters on my team about this, the right is the intelligence part, and that's the glue. That's the key is figuring out what is right, wh who is right, which device is right, all of those sorts of things. And I think that's the experience part. That's what makes the experience part of it effective and relevant for the audience, and that's what we need to be tying in and focusing on. Well, let's move into news item number three here on this edition of CMS Connected at the start of 2014, our predictions and trends show, if you will. And news item number three uh, is about Marketo. Um, and really, before I read the headline of this article, yeah, if yeah. we were here a year ago doing our trends and insight show, I would imagine one of the topics you could have easily predict it, or one of the themes would be real-time personalization and those types of things. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, according to this story, StreetInsider.com, and the news is that Marketo recently signed a definitive agreement to acquire Inside Terra. Mike Tellum and our good friends over at that company, they're a real-time personalization platform for websites and mobile applications. When combined with Marketo's rich behavioral data, targeting capabilities, and multi-channel engagement engine, this acquisition looks like it unlocks unique capabilities to unify customer conversations across channels, mm -hmm. create digital experience that are personalized mm -hmm. for each and every customer that are real time. This move delivers on a key element of Marketo's multi-channel relationship marketing vision and reaffirms Marketo's position as a leading innovator in the fast growing marketing software category. Does it? Yeah, I think that it does in a couple of, I think this is really relevant for a couple of reasons, and you and I both know the folks over at Inside Terra and Marketo fairly well. We've talked about them a lot, right? Um, I think number one, certainly as you said, real time is it. It's all about personalization, and certainly in the marketing automation space, it's all about personalization. So how can I take the intelligence that we just talked about that Inside Terra gives me and bring that into the marketing automation world to make all of my marketing attempts far more relevant to that person and tailored? Absolutely, that's the no-brains part of this. Um, the second key piece, though, that I see here um, is the notion that this is Marketo doubling down on the path that they've taken, right? Think about this. The marketing automation folks have been the ones that have been the targets of all these acquisitions, right? The pickup, the, the oracles have been picking them up. Salesforce uh, picked up exact target. Like, there's been all these acquisitions of the content marketing, uh, content sorry, marketing automation market, where they've been the acquired. And Marketo said not only, and we all kept thinking when you know the big companies were going to go acquire, like when Adobe was going to go acquire, I would have predicted Marketo would be their target. Instead, they, they, they picked up you know, someone else. Um, but I think here, Marketo actually said, not only are we not going to be acquired, I'm sure they had plenty of quarters, because they're out in front on this, but they actually went IPO, right? And then now here they are picking up an acquisition of their own. So they are going it alone um, in a much bigger way and sending that signal and really trying to grow uh, and leverage uh, their, their, their uh, individuality in the market. What does this mean for Inside Terra? Um, I think it's good. Um, you know, like I say, I t and I also talked to the, the Marketo folks this week, and they really value what Inside Terra brings to the table. First of all, I'm really happy for Mike Tellum and those guys. I mean, it's great for them. They profit well, but um, they already had some investment. They had some investors in here, but I think for them, um, they get to find their place. It was hard to go it alone as an, a small Israeli-based company that was trying to push out into the market. Mm. Marketo is a big flagship name. I hate that they have so much dog on purple, but whatever, they're a good, solid <laughs> brand that people know. And um, they can really you know, do what they came out there and intending to do. They were trying to change the world. They were trying to make the world more relevant to an audience of, of, of digital users. And I think now they're going to be able to do that and accomplish that goal. The purple thing. You, you weren't a Barney fan when you were Go a Go black, kid. dude. It's black is... The Barney, you have nightmares about Barney? Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm just trying to come out of the Barney phases myself. I got a two-, four-, and six-year-old, so it's... Uh, I'm trying to get out of that. It's best For our fourth story, we turn to the world of technology startups, but it's no longer accurate to call Acquia a technology startup. They are one of the fast 
this growing companies in New England. They have been. They have doubled um, their revenue uh, in each of the last two years. And it's many articles, you can find this everywhere, talking about an IPO for 2014. Recently, um, uh, they were talked about by the venture capitalist community as and identified as one of the leading IPO candidates for 2014. We refer to an article from uh, Scott Rainovich of Raino Media, who posted this on CMS Wire, titled Inside the Road to Aquia's Possible IPO. In this article, Scott states that the open source model for software is shaking up the web content management business and talks about Aquia's growth and talks about that, you know, uh, they only started in 2007 and they doubled their revenues. Yeah. They're an amazing company, in full <clears throat> disclosure. We both know Tom and everybody over there, right. been up to there. They, they are an amazing company. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a wonderful job with this. So, so let's bring in their CMO, That's right. Tom Wentworth, a guest here on CMS Connected, Butch Stearns and Scott Lear. Tom, how are you, my friend? Good, Butch. Scott, thanks for having me today. Yeah, great to see you. So, so let's just start with the obvious question. When is the IPO? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think you guys know that the, that kind of question that gets people in a lot of trouble. Um, I think what we're trying to do here is build a great business. I think, you know, you guys talked about some of the stuff we've had. I just was looking it up. We've grown 84,000% over the past five years. Uh, so it's some pretty historical growth numbers, and I'm really proud to be a part of this team call you right back and try and see if we can get a better connection with you because you're breaking up. Yeah, we, so, said, we said it's a, a year of the cloud and this hour. We didn't mean to have cloudy video there. Right. So let's, why don't we throw so, Tom's picture mug up there and just get him on audio or something. Yeah, so maybe. we'll get right back with you in a second, <clears throat> Scott. So, uh, Tom, so, so Scott, let's dive into this a little bit more. Uh, it, Tom will give us the thought about the, internet, the, the fact that they're talking about an IPO with, with Acquia, it all tells you all you need to know right. about Acquia's growth, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're on a growth path unquestionably, um, significantly. I mean, and they've got backers who realize and understand what the potential is here for them. So they're all about trying to, you know, productize this huge trend. I mean, they, what is it, 9% or, you know, 3% of the internet, I think, is on Drupal, and they're trying to productize that and get a way to go be able to kind of monetize on that. And they're doing a really darn good job bringing out new products. Of course, cloud-based products, they're entering in the, the commerce space, and it's a right, right time for them. So, um, yeah, I, it's, you know, I look forward to talking to Tom. Should we go on to the Internet of Things and talk about that, and then we'll yeah, come back to Yeah, why don't we Tom. move on to the next story, and we'll come back to Acquia, and we'll, uh, uh, we'll do that. So our next story uh, moves into an article about the Internet of Things, and... Uh, it's widely known that John Chambers, the chairman and CEO of Cisco Systems, likes big numbers. He is a keynote at the 2014, or he was, at CES in Las Vegas, um, and he may have picked up his biggest number yet. He pegged the value of the evolving, quote, Internet of Things, um, the latest buzzword, the next industry buzzword, or Internet of Everything, as Cisco calls it, at 19 trillion dollars. I feel like Austin <laughs> Powers when we do this. Yep. So Scott, for those of us not up to speed on the hottest topic of 2014, yeah. the Internet of Things, what does it mean? It's scary. Um, I mean, you know, the Internet of Things, yeah, if you're not following this, it's all about how do you, back to this notion of intelligence, how do you enable devices that are in our world every day that we interact with physical things? It is bringing the physical world and the digital worlds together, right? So it is the ability for your refrigerator to know when you're out of milk. It is the, you know, you know, one thing we could talk about right now is this notion, Nest. Um, if you're familiar with Nest, it yeah, is the a, thermostat. The, yeah, the, it's the that intelligent cool thermostat. Cool little thermostat yeah. that you know you can put on your wall that you can change the temperature of your house or know the temperature of your house or I mean I think it monitors for carbon monoxide and all sorts of other things from the internet and you can be notified and you can change it when you're away on all that sort of stuff. That's a really cool device. Now that was just acquired by Google this past uh, week or two weeks ago, something like that. Uh, which for me, as a kind of a naysayer of Google generally, I think you know anybody that has a do no evil as your kind of have to remind yourself in the world that you won't do evil with the information and data you've got. It's scary to me that now they they can be in my house, but um, they're everywhere anyway. I guess why the hell not? Let's but, talk about the number. Yeah. In your opinion, 19 trillion. I mean, that's <clears throat> it's a hard number to get your head yeah. around. I'm not that kind of an analyst, right? I mean, I. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get paid to make big, huge predictions like that. I mean, that's something that IDC does is they go out there and they go, you know, 
determine what the market sizing might look like and the market potential. But I don't doubt it because I think what they're doing is, the beauty of this is they're not innovating in terms of creating new things. They're just figuring out how to enable those things to become more digitized. So like I said, whether it's your car now, we've talked about Google like going into your car and now being able to do some stuff there, whether it is um, devices that l use RFID to even know upon checkout, maybe you won't even have to necessarily go to a checkout counter anymore, you just walk out with your car. It's, the Internet of Things is all about how do you digitize, the, you know, bring that digital world into the physical world and make that useful. All right, let's go back uh, to our story about Acquia and the rumors of an IPO, and let's bring Tom Wentworth, their CMO, back in. We're going to use Tom on the phone because we're having some problems connecting with him uh, via Skype. So, uh, Tom, you back with us? I sure am, guys. Uh, so, first of all, I, I think I've said this often when I see you. Congratulations on your company's success. Yeah, it's been a, a great ride. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, we were fortunate enough to be identified as the fastest growing private software company in the U.S. Uh, earlier this year by Deloitte with a growth rate of 84,000 percent, which is uh, pretty historic. So it's been a great ride. And I'm really proud to be part of the team. So you guys have um, most recently over the last couple of years coined the phrase digital disruption. Uh, it's been a big part of your success. This news and the rumors, not news, these rumors about an IPO. <laughs> this is, I mean, the talk of that, it's good. What's happened within your company because that's been out there? Good things? Yeah. I mean, first of all, it's, we're really proud to be a Boston-based company. So as part of the Boston startup ecosystem, it's always great to hear about success stories. And there's a few of them, companies like HubSpot and Acquia and others. So it's great to be part of that conversation. But you know, for us, it's about building a great business. And maybe I would categorize it as IPO ready. And what it means to be IPO ready is more about making sure that you've got, you're in a great business, you're in some great markets, that your your growing revenues at the sort of rate that people expect you to. And I think really for 2014, it's all about, you know, continuing along the journey of being an IPO ready company. And then, you know, when the time is right and, and you know, we, we'll do it on our terms, but it's certainly something that, that the board thinks about and our, our executive team thinks about. But there's no rush. The rush is to build a great company. Hey, Tom, Scott here. <clears throat> what, you, what do you think? You into the beard or no? Uh, Scott, I'm going to be honest with you. The reason my video wasn't working is because I saw how handsome you looked with that beard, oh and I just knew I couldn't goodness. compete. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, okay, so here's my question to you. Is there any news here? I mean, you know, I saw, first of all, I know that your job, you're, I've, I've said this before, that I respect you highly as a marketer. I think you do great things. You did great things in all of your past. So um, it doesn't... Uh, it, it doesn't at all surprise me that you that you keep uh, Acquia in the news, but it seems like so there was this article by Scott Rainovich out there saying that you know you're ready for it. That got picked up all over the place. Hey, they're oriented towards IPO. Then we've got Dries out there on all of his interview stints saying you know yeah sure, but that's not my orientation. I don't really care about all that. Is this much ado about nothing, or is there something real here? I think what's real is that the business has been very successful. Um, and we built a great business by providing products and services that allow large organizations to have lots of success with Drupal. So our success is pretty closely tied to the success of Drupal. And Drupal's been um, having, I think, one of its most successful years. Drupal this year in 2013 has really kind of crossed over to become really the enterprise alternative to products like Adobe and, and Sitecore and others. So I think Drupal's success is what allows Acquia to be successful. And I think there is news. And the news really isn't that Acquia is driving towards an IPO. It's that Drupal is having a tremendous amount of success in the market. And I think uh, you know, that, that, that success is accelerating. And Acquia is you know, benefiting from that, certainly, as are a lot of other companies that you know, build products and services around Drupal. Tom, can you talk about um, sort of the evangelical nature of the uh, developers? I think... Uh, in my opinion, tell me if I'm right or wrong, it's been a huge part of your success, obviously, but as you grow into a platform that's used a bunch of different ways, as you continue to evolve this, again, that's been a big part of your success, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, developers, I mean, I think that's one of the, one of the great statistics in the Drupal community is there are over a million uh, users on Drupal.org, which is sort of the community hub for Drupal. Uh, Drupal developers are some of the greatest people, and they are, you know, they work selflessly to contribute back to the open source project. 
Uh, Drupal is one of the largest open source projects in the world up there with Linux is maybe the top two. Uh, developers have been a huge part of our success, and I work really hard. I'm a dumb marketer, so I don't often think about, you know, developers are a harder audience for me to market to, but we work really hard to make sure that developers understand the value prop of, of Drupal, obviously, and the value prop of Aquarius products. How's that going, Tom? I know, you know, you guys have to walk a, a, a tight line there a little bit where, you know, you've got Dries on as your CTO, but he was the founder of Drupal. You've got the community. You are very much a community-driven uh, product and have to walk that line a little bit between how do you orient yourself as a company and how do you make sure that you that the product itself comes along as well without actually steering the ship? I mean, um, th there was some challenges there a couple of years ago, but has the tide changed a little bit? Is the community really embracing Acquia or what's the status today? Yeah, I think when Acquia entered the you know entered the market and came to be, there were some concerns around you know Dries's role and and how Acquia was going to evolve and what our products were going to be. And in the early days, we tried some things, they didn't work, and we've now sort of landed on the current business model, which is, you know, we're a cloud, SaaS, PaaS company. But I think what we do for the Drupal community is we create, we help create an economy. So as Acquia is successful, it creates all sorts of opportunities for Acquia partners, even for our competitors, frankly, to also have success. So I think, I think the community as a whole appreciates all the work we do and the investments we make because it creates more opportunities. As long as Drupal wins, a whole bunch of people win. Aqua wins, our competitors win, yeah. agencies win, uh, everyone wins. Uh, Tom, a couple last things before we let you go. Digitaldisruption.com, you launched that site. Uh, it's a great site. Talk more about it for people that don't know about it. Yeah, I mean, so we launched a site called digitaldisruption.com. It was a great URL we were able to, we were able to acquire, so we we're really happy about that. Uh, we're trying to create a content marketing property for digital executives. There aren't a lot of properties out there today that really speak to the needs of the CDO or chief digital officer. So we try to create uh, original content and curate content out there that really speaks to that audience. So if you're interested in topical content around CDOs, uh, definitely check the site out. It's, it's an, uh, lightly branded as an Aquia site, but really it's more about curating that great content for, uh, for CDOs. What, uh, I guess one quick question about that, because I'm always curious, because we're in that world of building communities and fostering those conversations. Anything surprising you've learned from the community since you launched it? Uh, yeah, we haven't. We've sort of, we've sort of been soft launching it. Uh, this actually, thanks guys for bringing it up. It's something that we're going to launch in a little bit bigger way here uh, in about a month or so. Um, it's really about social engagement. The way we've built up this community and, and been driving uh, uniques, and we've seen a nice sort of increase in traffic to it, has been through social engagement. So as you can imagine, really we're trying to get out there and find influencers in the CDO world and, and get them to engage with our content. So uh, social engagement has really driven us to where we are now. And now the next phase is going to be about, you know, how do we, you know, 10X the number of views on the site. Great. Hey, Tom, man, it's been, a gr been great having you on. Uh, thanks a lot for coming on. You're a good friend of the show and good luck with everything and great success to you guys. Yeah, thanks guys for having me. Sorry about the video problem. It's Scott, uh, keep the beard, man. Don't listen to the haters on Twitter. <laughs> All right, Tom, take care. Good catching up with you. See you guys. All take right, care. Tom Wentworth, the CMO of Acquia. So did we get an answer to our question? Is there an IPO in the works or not? Uh, you know, it was fuzzy. <clears throat> it, was, it was fuzzy. It was fuzzy. <laughs> That's the theme of this show today. <laughs> Time for us on CMS Connected now to take a quick break. Uh, and uh, pay attention to our sponsored spots here, SharePoint and Kentico. And we're back with predictions, trends for 2014 right after this. History has taught us that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That working together, we are able to accomplish more than we could ever accomplish on our own. That when great minds come together, anything is possible. So we are reinventing the way people work together. We are making it easier than ever before to share ideas, discover connections,
ask questions. Find answers. Stay in sync. Organize information. And build the team that takes an idea and makes it a reality. SharePoint, the new way to work together. Businesses today demand a powerful web content management and online marketing platform that can provide the best value at an affordable price with unlimited website possibilities. Kentico, the .NET enterprise marketing solution and web content management platform of choice, powers more than 12,000 websites in over 84 countries, which means you get a stable, well-tested solution fully loaded with over 350 web parts and controls and more than 80 extensible modules. Kentico provides you with a fully integrated solution for building your online presence and running successful online marketing campaigns. It allows you to quickly launch an effective B2B or B2C site, intranet, online store, or branded online community, fully integrated with Facebook and Twitter. Test drive Kentico EMS today to get a complete appreciation of all its powerful features and capabilities. Welcome back to CMS Connected, the web content management industry's only news commentary show. I'm Butch Stearns of the Pulse Network. And I'm Scott Lee of Digital Clarity Group. The bearded one. Uh, we'll get to <laughs> your now. predictions in just a little bit, but let's start with some hot topics or yeah. trends, if you will. Uh, your colleague, Robert Rose at Digital Clarity Group, uh, has uh, stated in a pretty strongly worded quote that the WCS industry is, uh, our web content management industry is in a funk. Mm -hmm. Talk more about this. Yeah, so, you know, look, he threw something out there with the intention of trying to get a little bit of uh, buzz going, and it did. There's some good, nice, good comments on it. I saw one as recent as this morning. Um, and, you know, his point is this. He's basically trying to say, like, are we going to, you know, are we moving along with the times WCM vendors? And um, kind of their reaction was, which frankly supported his point, you know, even Tom specifically, one of his reactions and that of Sitecore and others was basically, what's the WCM industry? Like, who, who, who out there considers themselves to still be WCM industry? And so therefore, the more enlightened vendors don't necessarily think of themselves as web content management vendors only anymore. Because as I said earlier, the kind of fence posts around the, the web content management specific capabilities um, have expanded significantly into marketing automation, into um, audience intelligence and insight, into experience delivery, into a number of these other things. And so that brings with it you know, more technologies that they've placed in there and certainly more capabilities. And positioning wise, they're trying to position themselves to do a lot of different things. Again, it's not necessarily an efficiency play. It is more of the you know, if, uh, uh, experience play. That said, there are still vendors out there, we talked about one today, um, that still does kind of consider web content management to be web content management. And so um, maybe while the mo more enlightened ones spoke up and said, you know, we don't even consider ourselves that necessarily, um, they're still out there. And certainly, if the vendors are still somewhat grappling with this, the buyers are way behind that. So there are plenty of buyers out there who are still just trying to buy the web content management capability, right? Okay, so let's talk about acquisitions for 2014 and what the trend might be, because at the end of 2013, Aaron, just in the past month or so, oh, I'm sorry, did I interrupt you at one you more point? You know what, no, 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 I, I thought, you'd, thought you'd lob me one more question, I'd be able to bring it up, so I okay. saved it for after you, but I do want to say one thing. Give me the question and I'll throw it at you. Uh, so tell me more. Tell me more, Scott. <laughs> No, one point to, to accentuate the last one, which is the mindset of the audience, or the buyers, rather, versus <laughs> the mindset of the sellers, the vendors in this case. Analyst's job is to get way out front and tell what's coming. Vendor's job is to certainly see that road and start building for the future and be able to stay relevant. Buyers tend to be in all sorts of, you know, they're in the hype cycle, right? They're leaders or laggards or whatever. Tom actually made a point to Robert's post on the blog where, um, you know, Tom was saying, who even considers themselves a web content management vendor anymore? And Robert countered by saying, yeah, but Acquia's tagline is something having to do with content management. And, and Tom you know, piped back, don't confuse 
SEO with you know, what we actually do or consider ourselves to do. But here's the thing. What SEO says about you is um, it's what people are looking for. So if something is relevant from an SEO perspective and if using the content management language and terminology is what gets you more clicks and what gets, that's what people are searching for. So let's not trick ourselves into thinking the entire audience of world of buyers out there and businesses and organizations have yet really come around to this notion. I'm not saying that, but they need to. Right? If they're not orienting the themselves mindset. towards that, they need to, in 2014, starting now, in the same way that you need to embrace the cloud and realize that it's here to stay, same thing. Web content management is no longer just about how to publish content to the web. It's much more about how do you drive, understand your audience and drive that experience. For them. All right, now let's move on to acquisitions. And so. what do you make of all the late acquisitions in 2003? We've talked a lot about them yep. on this show. We had Oracle buying responses. We had Marketo scooped up inside Terra. Salesforce nabbed exact target. And, and there's many others. Microsoft acquired Parachore. Um, are organizations unable to do well on their own? Anymore, Scott? Is that why? And are we going to see more of these acquisitions in 2014? One will always see acquisitions. There are two types of analysts out there that these vendors have to satisfy. There are the industry analysts who talk about whether they're innovating appropriately and they're orienting their, their suite or building their suite to, um, to, to keep an audience and continue to be relevant in the buyer's mind. And then there are the financial analysts who care about numbers and dollars and cents and shareholder value. and um, you know, some vendors cater more towards one than the other, uh, but so some of these acquisitions are driven to actually grow a portfolio and that they really plan to build and integrate these things together. Um, and other vendors buy them so that they can continue to meet shareholder value and they, they, they may not necessarily be as oriented towards, you know, de migrating or, or developing the products and integrating them and they more so are just trying to do land grabs. So you talked about the why, you stated that well, there will always be acquisitions, but how about yeah. the direct question about for this year, do you think we'll see more, yeah. like a, a trend of more acquisitions yeah. now because of what's going on? Um, I, I think there'll be different types of acquisitions. I think the targets will be different, right? So kind of we've already done the whole like, let's go pick up the marketing automation vendors. Most of those have been swooped up. We talked about Marketo, who's a standalone and idiosyncrasy there. But for the most part, that's happened. Um, I think what you've started to see in the latter half of this past year is a run on commerce, right? So the integration and intersection of content and commerce that I want to talk about as a, as a prediction as well. But I think you'll see more of that, those two coming together. Um, and then I think what we just saw, Oracle just bought... Uh, um, Responses. No, oh, well, they uh, did buy that uh, too. But um, who did they buy? Boy, uh, Compendium. So Compendium is one of a, a number of content marketing uh, uh, technologies out there that are much more around, you know, how do you do what, you know, all these things are just the pipes. These are just the tools to enable an, an organization to get their message out. The whole notion of building that message, creating that message, the, the art of marketing has kind of been lost on the age-old WCM vendors in this space. Things like Compendium and tools like that are actually much more focused on the process of writing good marketing content. How do you do that? How are you working with your team? How do you um, bring your agencies into the fold to work with them to make sure that you're creating the best content that you possibly can? You know, content calendars, those sorts of things. Um, you know, pulling in good good content and feeding that back to your audience, maybe with a little bit of your own insights on top of that. It's the, the staying on, on relevance. So the pickup of Compendium was one that you know, Robert Rose predicted a while ago was that there was gonna be a run on this, and I think you're gonna see more and more of that this year for sure. My final point about acquisitions, when we, since we're in a predictions mode or trends mode, with Oracle buying uh, responses for 1.5 billion, yeah. how about a quick prediction or thought about what might be next? What might be a, a, a company that makes a move in not necessarily reaction to that, mm -hmm. but follows up on that? That's a big splash. Uh, I, I've said it too many times. It's one of these years. It's going to finally come true. <laughs> I really, the Cubs win the World Series. I really think that <laughs> SAP wants to get into this space. Um, they did go and buy Hybris, right? And so they they were they kind of brought in the commerce piece. They still don't have the content piece. And so whether they pick up a core media, whether they pick up even open text, which is a big partner of theirs, I don't know, but I still think they're going to come into the content game because they are missing that piece. So I, that's my prediction. In the World Series. Hey, you know, maybe so. But hey, we got a new mascot though. Have you seen oh that guy and all of the goings on go about that? Let's I not go there. I did see the, and all the <laughs> yeah. controversy Woo. around it. All right. 
<laughs> uh, time before your predictions for a question from the audience, Scott. Oh, yeah, okay. That's been sent Let's in to CMS Connected. It's Mark Saunders mm -hmm. from Content Bloom, of all places, in Belgium. Content Bloom. Um, right. I'm seeing more developments moving away from CMS as pre-rendering a site, be it .NET or .JSP, and being used more as traditional content management systems, allowing a development team to manage sites and tech specifics, et cetera. This is a model I worked with when I first started working with CMSs some 10, 15 years ago. So here's the question from Mark Saunders mm. from Belgium. Do you see this in any other CMS environments and how do they feel about the functionality of the core CMS being rolled back, so to speak? It's an interesting question because everything we've said so far on the show says absolutely not. Right. That said, uh, Mark is in Belgium. We're actually just in the midst. We're about to launch our um, service provider report <coughs> focused on Europe that we've been working with a, you know, a lot of European brands to understand who they work with in the agencies and play in that space. And we are realizing completely, and probably more people in the audience knew this than I did, but you know, the, the European market is very different than ours. And the way that they look at web content management still does have a little bit of the old mindset. They're not necessarily so sold on the whole experience piece per se. That's a big, big fat you know, um, overstatement probably but or generic but um, I think so I think that's wrong no I don't think it's a trend by any means that doesn't mean that there aren't that there isn't still plenty of money to be made with those laggards who haven't necessarily bought in and said I'm ready to change I think the part of kind of the mindset of old that is relevant today and even more so is one of the problems that web content management set out to solve is the notion of separation from content and presentation right and so those two things, that was, um, that was big before, got a little bit of play. I think now in this world where you've got this notion of omni-channel, which I really hate that term, by the way, but this notion of lots of channels, this notion of content anytime, anywhere, through different devices, through, you know, being pushed by different systems, or whatever, it's even more relevant today to separate your content from the presentation. And so I think we are going to see a renewed birth on implementing systems that can enable you to be able to do that. Um, and that, So that's kind of an old mindset of CMS, so I think yep. that is still very relevant, but it's only because it enables all of this notion of personalization and all these things in the, in the future that folks are now dealing with. All right, time now for our predictions for 2014 with Scott Lear from Digital Lewer. Thank you. Digital wow, Clarity look at that. Group. I'm just used to it now. I just answered. Try that again. Time now for predictions for 2014 with Scott Lewer from Digital Clarity Group. I'm awesome. Butch Stearns of the Pulse Network. You are watching CMS Connected, the web content management industry's only news commentary show. You've got five basic predictions or areas of prediction. So why don't I read them off one by one and you comment about what you mean by that. Sounds good. First one is customer experience management. What does that mean we're going to see in 2014? Yep. I think the term has been out there for three-ish years as far as the web web content management people are concerned or the web, the digital people are concerned. It's a term that's been around though for 15 years um, in the market. I think that in 2014, and we'll go into this in a bit more, but I think we will finally actually understand the purest view of that and what that really means. It's not just about digital experiences. I'll tell more. Um, your second one is uh, commerce. Did you want to just do overview and then go into the more afterwards? Yeah, let's go, let's stay I go on now. Them. Stay on that and finish Yeah, let's it. stay on Okay, them. let's finish it. I think we only have 15 minutes anyway. We're yeah. having too much fun on the show today. Um, <laughs> actually, I've gotten past the itchy phase, so it's good now. Um, okay, so, um, you know, I, I think by that means, so customer experience management is all around as, as businesses, and there's this notion of digital disruption that we just talked about, right? As businesses are being disrupted. Um, the notion of digital disruption, I think, has been viewed too shallowly. Um, it is not that businesses need to make themselves digital. By, like, you know, the digital transformation is not just about transform your business to digital and start delivering your products and services digitally. It is rather embrace and use digital, whether internally or obviously in the face of the customer, to improve that experience regardless. And so therefore, a hotel um, company, we're not saying to interact with your hotel customers necessarily differently, although Internet of Things could take off there, et cetera, but more like how about that front desk person to enable them to have more insight and information about you know, the marketing um, piece that you answered to to even book this hotel said that I was here because I got a package with a the theater, but they have no idea usually about that. The 90% of the employees that we deal with when we think about a customer experience have no clue about how I've been marketing 
marketed to. And in fact, if I truly do personalize and cater an experience on the marketing front to somebody, I only heighten that customer's expectations of what I'm going to deliver. And frankly, then I fall short if I haven't actually transformed the way that we work differently. So I think the true customer experience, people are finally going to embrace it, that it's not just about catering a digital experience in the buying process. And they're going to actually really start focusing how to operationalize the notion of digital to get those benefits and actually change the customer's experience with the brand. It's a good explanation if you made the point off the top that the term's been around for three or four years, but you believe that in 2014 it's going to go to the next level. It's, it's going to become uh, integral to almost everything everybody's it's doing. It's the reason that I really embrace the CEM <laughs> acronym as opposed to the CXM one. I was never bought into that because I thought it was too shallow. It was looking at like the web experience notion of what CEM. I am embracing the old view of it that SAP started back in a la 1999 when they were saying, how do we right size and align all these systems internally to have a single view of the customer? I think today, that's more possible because of cloud, because of mobile, because of social, how we can interact internally and all that. And so the old view of CEM coupled with today's digital disruption and capabilities enable us to truly raise the bar on customer experience. Scott's second trend of prediction for 2014 comes under the uh, broad heading of commerce, mm -hmm. but it's more about the intersection of commerce and content. So what are we going to see in 2014 that's going to put that to the next level. Yeah, and I'll help us make up some time as we don't have that much left on this one. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. It's that there will be, I think, a run on the intersection of commerce and content as they come together more. There will be more acquisitions in this space, and we've seen it recently um, where uh, Sitecore just announced uh, a partnership with Microsoft at NRF the other day about this. They also, when we did a webinar on this about a month ago, they also acquired um, a, a former Microsoft tool um, in the commerce space. Acquia has their commerce product. Um, you know, I said SAP came into this space by buying up Hybris. I think there's going to continue to be a run on that, and we're going to see these two things come together and content and commerce come together even more in 2014 through acquisitions and through just... Another prediction you have for 2014 is that the importance of integrators and agency service providers is going to gain even more this year. You would hope so. I would. Uh, as the principal for Digital Clarity Group, but, yep. but why do you feel that way? Yeah, and the, 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 the relationship between Digital Clarity Group and this notion is that our big kind of flagship uh, report out to the market has been about service providers and their role in this space. And, you know, here's the thing. As technologies get more and more complex, as um, the old version of software categories kind of go away, the notion of web content management, again, it's now like five categories in one or seven. Like, as these things all come together um, and gets more and more complex, then the value of the software itself actually decreases individually, right? And it's now more about how you've pulled all that together, what your strategy is like, how you understand your audience to be able to orient to them, and who owns that but the service providers. So integrators and stuff have always been really relevant before, but you could swap out integrators to replace more effectively to implement some software before. Now it's you're creating that experience. These guys are all, you're seeing the agencies come into the technology space more and more by bringing on that capability. Um, and you're seeing the technology firms like the Sapiens go and acquire, and this was years ago, they acquired Nitro and pulling that in. But these blending of the agencies and integrators together is more and more, and the notion of the digital agency gains prominence. And I think the other ones will continue to fall aside as all businesses are orienting themselves to create the digital experience of. of Two other predictions you have. <clears throat> I like your next one. It's Thank sort you. of Jurassic Park four. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if we go to if we go to Jurassic Park, if we go to the island again, right, and we get there, that in 2014 you're going to see as dinosaurs the people yes, that sir. have that. You've been hitting this theme all show. We have. Web content management only yep. mindset. Those are going to be the dinosaurs parading around Jurassic Park four. Correct. That's right. The businesses that have the old mindset will start to lose traction to new businesses and be disrupted by them if you are not taking advantages of the contemporary capabilities of these tools. And certainly even faster than that, I'm not actually that's not my prediction for this year. That will be a next year prediction. It's a little we're behind on the on the business implementation side. But certainly the vendors who have the purest mindset of the old version of WCM they, unfortunately, they will really lose ground and they will be insignificant um, by, by the end of this year, period. And your final prediction for 2014 is more integration, uh, sort of the challenge 
of publishing versus intelligence. Talk about that. What do you yeah. mean by that? And we did allude to that a little bit too. But this whole notion of kind of, it's all, you know, we talk about this and you've heard this a bunch of times. Right time, right place, right content, right right device, all that. The notion of this, and again, this, some of these thoughts, are this, this thought particularly is from Tim Walters on my team, and I'll have him write about it, but the, the key there is the publishing part was about to the person, the, the, getting the content there itself, to the device, that's a publishing problem. The notion of right, what's right, how do you decide what content, how do you decide what the person wants to see, how do you decide what device to push it to um, or channel, um, that to me is the intelligence aspect of this. And that's the like, that's the glue. And that's really where it's going to be at and that's where the differentiation will be. So this notion of business intelligence and BI that was kind of like had fallen off and it's very much back here. The notion of um, pulling in the capabilities of, and it, this has been for a while already, the trend of analytics and that. Some, we've talked about that for a couple of years now, pulling that back in, but the intelligence behind this, Things like CRM, will CRM be reinvigorated in this year in the new era of experience? Can we finally start to figure out how to make something of the CRM promise and use that to really have that insight and put that at the center of our universe so we truly do understand our customers and their needs and where they are and make sure to now use the tools, the publishing tools for the various channels to be able to utilize that knowledge. Scott Lewer's predictions for 2014 summed up in these five bullet points on the web content management industry, customer experience experience management, uh, the intersection of commerce and uh, content uh, taking on a new level, service providers gaining in importance, uh, the purest WCM only falling by the wayside, and the challenge of publishing versus intelligence that he just talked about. Now, before we say goodbye, Scott, yes. we have to go to Twitter because this is a, <coughs> excuse me. Oh man, did you do a poll? <coughs> no. <laughs> Our vibrant community for CMS Connect yes. is weighing in mm. with their own predictions for 2014, specifically towards your facial hair. Ah, ah. So let's go to Twitter and uh, see if we can get here. This is the beard vote 2014. Uh, mm. No nice. to a fan hashtag. And that's a female, by the way. So that matters okay. more, far more. That's like a three times waiting versus Tom's vote. Oh, not a fan. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah, that's a <laughs> Okay, that's not a, no a fan of the beard for 2014. Yeah. Here's another one. Time for a little at Scarlett and Butch Stern. See if it's gifted. Love the beard. And see, that's nice. Again, a guy, though. So that's worth about a third of the previous. Do month. we have a deciding vote? Oh, seven of them. Seven votes. What? That's our audience. What's that on your face? Yeah. From Jade Carter. I'm just going to read that as, hey, what's that on your face? That's how I do that. <laughs> okay. You take the tweet <laughs> any way you want, my friend. No beard, says, yeah, says uh, Carrie. Carrie Lynn. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love the beard, says oh, look Stephanie. Oh, that. Keep it. Oh, so you've got women battling now. When you can't grow it on top, grow it on Wait your face. Wait a minute. Now, I got uh, the short hairs on, well, that's about, short hairs has its own connotation, but this is uh, by, by, by choice, not necessarily by design. Uh, but, well, and then of, your colleague, uh, Tim while. Walters, it's not often that you see a man with more hair on his face than on his head. He's obviously not a baseball fan of the Boston Red Sox. There you there go. There's plenty of that. There you go. Fear the beard <clears throat> for 2014. Yeah, big you're you're late with the beard. Uh, yeah, I know, but I'm a Cubs fan, dude. I have to. I was waiting for that, but uh, I'll be waiting too long. So my beard will be pretty long if I keep it. So on that's it for this edition of CMS Connected. Uh, our next show. Uh, first, a quick reminder down below you there. Um, I didn't do this off the top of the show, which I usually do. A uh, reminder to download the white paper there uh, at the bottom of your screen on the player where you're uh, watching this, um, and. Um, all you have to do is, I recommend it, the understanding the ROI of marketing automation. It's located at the bottom of your screen, so I recommend you download uh, that software. And again, thanks to our lead sponsors, Falcon Software uh, for CMS Connected and Digital Clarity Group for uh, CMS Connected. Thank you for that. And also, Scott, uh, you're debuting a new website with Digital Clarity Group. We Talk are. about really, that. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I guess Monday after next, that's the 27th, I think. Yep. We're going to... Uh, put out our new website. We're, we're, we're grown-ups now. we so got a lot a more content, peak? a lot more people. This is a sneak peek. This really? is actually, yeah, this is not live. This is only by, uh, this is only by login or whatever for special folks. But a little bit there, you can see more about our research and what we're talking about and what we're writing about, the profiles of our, our folks. And uh, yeah, so it's a little sneak peek. Yeah, there. always exciting for a company That's when fine. you debut your new website. That's right.
right? Yeah. Because you feel like you renew, renew what you're doing, refocus on what you're Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. You know, and um, you know, right now we're, we've got no place for a whole lot of the content and the good things that we have to say, and so we, you know, we were it was it was needed. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to really watching. It. All right, we thank you for being a part of this edition of CMS Connected. Uh, for our sponsors, Falcon Software and Digital Clarity Group. For my co-host Scott Lear. For producers, Pat Leonard, Andy Kyle Wentworth. McNaught, and Adam Sklar, who worked so hard on this show. We thank you. We thank Tom Wentworth for being a guest right. on this show. So get connected, stay connected, and stay connected on CMS Connected. Our next show is February 27th at 12.30. We will see you then on the next edition of CMS Connected.